traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of drug overdose, perhaps? Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. Which we know he was a fisherman. The chest was originally opened to perform the operation. The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. A puncture over the left lung, possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. Signs of internal bleeding. So, Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then he tried to operate on him again. Tippett has made an egregious error. It's time we talked. Oops. I would think Tippett's is in trouble. Oh, can't go ahead, that's so I've got to go the long way. One thing I am going to check as well, because... This machete is 45 damage. Ooh! I'm not going to take the scythe because it's two-handed. I like the attack speed. Oh. It's a proper short sword. sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. But to drink blood is so tempting. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, I mean, but efficient in the proper dosage. Why is he worrying about becoming stronger? He's clearly holding his own. Very competently, I would imagine. No, I would add. Oops. Damn it. So Oh, so this is how we get new recipes. Hmm. That bottle was glowing. I thought I could pick it up. So Craft the treatment for fatigue. Can I do that here? Bring the medicine to Dorothy Crane. Okay. Come on. I've got no blood points, so I'm gonna feed on you, boy.
nice. Jesus Christ! Stop! Oh! Damn, they hurt <laughs> when there's two of them like that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just saw something. Um, Milton Hooks. So, Milton Hooks, the Pembroke ambulance driver, confessed to pay. Um, patient who was bringing to the hospital attacked him. He had to escape through the facility garden, but lost his wallet while doing so. The attacker must have been quite violent. Milton refuses to return to the garden. Maybe I should search the garden and see for myself what's really going on. Well, we know what's going on. We've, we got his wallet. So we, that's the guy we've got to get the wallet back to. Milton. It's telling me at the top, rest to evolve. You guys can't see it because of my face, but uh, we've got 1,305 XP. Which I think is a good amount. So actually, let's... Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, <laughs> oh, she don't know nothing, does she? Who are you really? Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's mind, you see? Hmm. I'll okay. leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Wait, the ambulance driver, is this the dude out front? Is it you? Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. 
Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Oh! Oh, nice! I have some good news, Milton. What? The epidemic's over? I retrieved your wallet. With all the money and a certain picture. Well, yeah, Pippa Hawkins is my girl. So what? Is it the difference of skin color that bothers you? Not at all, Milton. Good. Please, take this money anyway. To remind you to keep your mouth shut. Not everybody's as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Should, should name it to Van Beard. <laughs> Let's trade. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Look, it was a, it's just like the time, isn't it? Uh... Oh, 315 shillings, but that's good. Can we, can we sell shit? So we can sell Clay's hatchet because we don't need it. We can't sell other stuff to him. Okay. Investigation success. And we now know that he's shacking up with Pippa. Oh, Oh wait, no, no, no. Oh wait, no, it's up, it's up. Yeah, I can try, I can try. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. I have a proper one. Did you one. find anything okay. of value? Are you sure? Yes, nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. I don't like this Duty nurse's calls. mouth. When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. I don't like this woman's mouth. So, de disease decreases the blood quality of his and use the Crest medicine to heal them. Speak to the patient in the room behind Dorothy to check his medical status. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. There are such games and stuff, Saviour, with that type of thing in mind where humans are the minority and different, not just vampires, but other creatures of the nights as well. Ghouls, whites, um, werewolves, different lichen entirely, all fight over human resources. And because if I can't remember what the name of the game is, but I remember someone telling me, I actually think it's a TTRPG, a tabletop roleplay game where you play as humans or one of the monster factions trying to, upset the balance and i think it's a brilliant premise so yeah and if i remember right, it's like crime families almost like organized how it is and it's like tense relationships don't quote me on it because i can't remember the name of it but i do remember being told about it i'm pretty sure it's a tabletop game though not a video game so because i think i know who told it me but i don't speak to him anymore because he's a <clears throat> And not so nice person. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, but would you let it go that far or find a way to extract blood without killing them? Uh, I actually think in some cases like that, you would have like like dairy cows, wouldn't you, essentially? Where you milk as much as you can, push it to the limit, let them rest. And then, like, say you'd have like three people, say, you'd draw from. Like, like blood donations, yeah. yeah. So press E to check the medical sense. I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Mm. Give medicine. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Okay, so can we press V and look at his... So press R for details. So. 
So the blood quality is meh, but he's recovering. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. For me, what a blundering idiot! Yeah, citizen's blood will provide you a massive XP boost. Look for citizens to mesmerize. Oh, look at your look for citizens of your mesmerized level or below, so choose wisely. Interesting. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> the, you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead, unalive, Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Mm. Yeah, it's a paradox. It's fucking... There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. Okay. Yeah, we need each other. I, 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 I don't... It's not amusing, and I don't want to pander to him, but I don't really want to scold him either. I'm not some doe-eyed student, Edgar. I understand we both have something to gain from this relationship. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? Why the stole? Of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Why? Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Why do I feel like that's... We're going to have to kill someone, aren't we? I'm taking all your shit. Look at this. I'm stealing it. So, someone outside tending to the patients look for someone pragmatic and delicate. Possible? At least that mistress of the dark has stopped following me. Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did oh. he really? 
It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. Personal questions. I want to know, because she was the nurse that assisted in that dude's death. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Mm. 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 No, no, I, I, I can't say I approve of what you did. But as a field surgeon, I know that some situations require you to bend the rules. I'm not proud of what I've done, but to contain the epidemic must be our priority. So we can't afford to lose Dr. Tibbets. Okay, okay. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Are you Tippets by chance? Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippets, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now, eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. You. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. Died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. Nature of the what mistake. was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Mm. Who was he? Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed the body. Yikes. Well, being a blood transfusion specialist will be a little different as a vampire. I don't imagine he's... If he doesn't manage his thirst well enough. Yeah. It, there's a lot of... Uh... <laughs> Um, temptation. I will cover for you, Dr. Tippets, by keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I, I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make her this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. I feel bad because he should face consequences for the actions he did, but I don't think he should resign. In the day, Dr. He's bound to make a mistake or two in his career. The flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfields, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. 
Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Oh. <laughs> Swansea fancies. So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but a rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Uh... Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent yeah. in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Um... Yeah, why not solve it yourself? If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze. The blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. So do you want me? What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Is it a vampire? Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. Okay, please continue. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? Just, it, it, it's only logical, come on. We both are afflicted with a thirst for blood, Lady Ashbury. That is our nature. By vocation, we also have reason to visit the hospital. Logic dictates. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. <laughs> my visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea God damn it, has Ring. been treating my condition Hello. with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Okay. Right, now that's cutscenes over. Well, dialogue. Hello, Ring. You ass. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you well? It seems you're having a fun time at my expense. 
<laughs> I'll accept that. Good. Good. Uh, that's Gwyneth again. I'm doing alright. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's what we like to hear. Uh, that's a nurse over there, because I'm assuming...